uh, Max actually spent far less time on his lead foot. And there's something really fascinating I noticed. It looks like they purposely punished Max with leg kicks whenever he went to Orthodox. Now, there was a very big reason for this, so let me play this segment of the interview for you. Uh, the stance switch, the stance switch was we we expected, so we waited for that. Um, uh, Max, and this is this, I mean, this is a commonality amongst all fighters, but Max is uh, great defense, uh, great offense from Southpaw, pretty average defense. So um, we definitely, after damaging the league, expected Max to spend extended period of time in Southpaw, and I felt that. The strategy we put in place to deal with that as well. I thought I thought Volk, uh, Volk did very well against Max when Max turned southpaw, which we expected. So this clip mentions that Max's offense from southpaw is pretty good, but his offense is pretty average from southpaw. So by forcing the kicks whenever Max was an orthodox, they actually baited him into switching into a fighting stance where he wasn't as good defensively. And I thought this was a really good plan on their behalf because it really proved to be right a lot of the times. And Max did mention on Rogan's podcast at some point that when he was in Southpaw, he noticed that Alex was waiting a little. And that might have had to do with the fact that they're actually waiting for Max to come and approach and punish him because they knew that his defense wasn't as good. And then we actually end up seeing that he actually landed a lot of counter shots on Max when he was in Southpaw leading. So by getting Max into Southpaw, they were really able to land a lot of their offense and a lot of their counters. And you're going to be able to notice that in round 3, you're going to see that Volkanovski was able to land at a 2 to 1 ratio. So for every 1 shot that Max would land, Volkanovski would be able to land at least 2 shots. And then coming into round 4, what Max actually did was switch back to Orthodox. And then we start to see the fight stats be a little bit more even down and... Max being able to catch up in his offense there. For what I studied from Volkanovski's counter game, I noticed that he follows a specific trend. He never really allows Max land more than a few shots without firing his own counters. And he'll either throw crowns before the shot comes or just shortly after. And this kind of counter strike makes it really hard for someone to land combos because they're always looking to shut you down before you can even get anything going. Holloway had the height advantage standing at 5'11 versus Volkanovski's 5'6 but oddly enough Volkanovski had the reach advantage of 71.5 inches versus Holloway's 69 inch reach. Interestingly enough, they both were able to use their physical traits as useful tools against each other. Here's an example of how Volkanovski can use his height in his favor. Now taller fighters, they have to strike downwards but in doing so, tend to leave openings to their chins, and we're going to see how that's exploited in this next example. So in this example, Volkanovski is going to actually dip low to avoid the initial shot, but in doing so, Max is going to have his focus lower where the head is, and usually they'll either strike low or keep their focus low, but in doing so, they have their chin exposed right up top, so all Volkanovski has to do now is to come up high with the lead hook to catch that opening. You're going to see the lead hook land right there. Another counter that Volkanovski likes throwing is the dipping power shot into the lead straight. This follows the same concepts as previous counters. He's going to lower his level to evade the shot to the head and then he'll throw the power shot and then follow up with the lead straight. The unique thing about this is that his lead straight it's almost some kind of hybrid between having the momentum of a hook but the trajectory of a straight jab and it ended up producing really good results. The lead straight works really well because it comes out a lot faster than a hook. Now you gotta keep in mind that a straight shot will reach target sooner than a circular one because a straight shot is the closest path to your target. So when we saw this in a fight, he was almost never caught throwing that lead straight. Another big reason why counters were working so well was because they were fighting in a mirror stance. Now what that means is that your opponent's lead foot matches your lead foot. So you're almost like looking inside of a mirror. And this really helped in Volkanovski's favor because it helped land up those shots perfectly because of how their bodies are land up. Now this particular counter proved to be really effective against Holloway's offensive strategies. Um, just take a look at his oblique kick. 
every time Holloway would try to throw that oblique kick, because of the mirrored stance matchup, the rear hand would line up very nicely towards Holloway's chin. And at some point, Volkanovski was able to land a counter at some sequence of every time Holloway would. When it came to fighting just outside of the boxing range, both fighters, they both tried to fight to establish who controlled the range. Now this is where you would see Volkanovski and Holloway pawing at each other's hands. So if you control their hand, you can control their weapons, which means you can effectively take away one of their threats. Now what this does is it increases your chances of being able to go on the attack without getting countered back. Now there's a variety of ways that you can go about doing this, but I'm just going to highlight some of the more common tactics that these guys use in the fight. So take a look at what Volkanovski does in this next example. You'll notice that he uses his rear hand to control Max's lead hand, and once he's minimized that threat, he'll actually hop step forward with a jab and then follow up with the power hand shot. But let's look at an example. So here we see Alex, he's about to reach to Max's hand to control that lead hand and then he does a jab and hop steps forward into range. And once he's into range, he's going to throw his rear hand. In this situation you see they both try to attempt shots and they both do a good job of throwing off each other's punches. But this is a good example of how he's able to close that distance from controlling the opponent's weapon. Konopsky hasn't been as accurate up top, but if you're Max, now you gotta just take the leg It's finally started to slow down a little bit. This is just another strategy where he controls the lead hand with his own rear hand, and then once he has control of it, he just slips that right hand right through. So in this example, what Max likes to do is paw at the opponent's hand quite often. Now what this does is it establishes a rhythm where the opponent's going to want to reach back. He's actually going to use this rhythm against them by baiting them to reach at their hand. And here he's going to reach out, make him bait to reach his hand. And when he does that, he's going to actually hook around because when the opponents reach out, they tend to leave openings and Max actually uses the opportunity to hit the openings, usually with a hook. And then he follows up with a rear hand. You're going to see more examples of this pretty soon here. Max did a good job at attacking the body. We would often see him throw a lot of double jabs to distract the attention high and then he would come low for the body shot. And moving into round 4, his corner actually encouraged more body shots so that's where we started to see more emphasis on attacking the body. Now this was pretty effective against Volkanovski's body because if you pay attention to Volkanovski's habits, he uses a lot of head movement but while he's using the head movement, his body is still there to be attacked. And there was one nice development at one point where Holloway would actually time a knee when Volkanovski would go and slip and shell while doing his step up. So whenever Volkanovski attempted to step up, Holloway, he timed that knee and then while Volkanovski took his head off the center line, it made it really difficult for Holloway to counter the head but the body, it didn't quite move off the center line, so it made it easier for Holloway to just slam his knee right into the body. Um, it was a little bit unfortunate because Holloway, he didn't quite pick up on this despite how often Volkanovski would use a step over to press forward. Now, the really funny part is that Berman admittedly said that he was giving out too much in saying this, but the knee was indeed an effective tool and suggested that body work would have been a good route to invest in. One of the nice things about Volkanovski is that he's pretty technically sound defensively. You'll notice that a lot of the times that he misses his shots, he's always ready to evade or get out of the way. And it makes it really hard for opponents to bait and counter him because he leaves such a small window for you to be able to actually find that shot on him. 
I found this fight to be really interesting because Max's game was exploited a lot and we saw the play out from how Volkanovski was able to land a lot of his counters and able to land a lot of his general approaches. And not to mention those late kicks too, they took away a lot of the things that Max did well. And the crazy thing is that they did know what Max did well and they didn't allow him to get to a place where he can actually impose it. And pretty much the story of this fight was all about denying all the things that Max needed to do in order to be effective. Now, there's a few things that could change the second time around if they do rematch. And if they do a rematch, it could be a good idea addressing some of the stuff that we looked at. Obviously, dealing with the kicks is going to be a priority. And then, it might be a good idea too to use the orthodox dance a little bit more because they exploited his defensive openings when he was in the uh, southpaw stance. And then lastly, it might be a really good idea to capitalize on using those body shots, especially that knee that we looked at earlier. And if we do get a rematch, it'll be interesting to see what happens, because if Max wins, it's gonna tell us a lot about how he manages to solve a whole bunch of these puzzles. Hey, if you like my work, follow me on WordPress. Uh, I actually have a lot of fight analysis on there as some of your favorite fighters. So just go ahead and search me up on there. I'm Striking Thoughts, and thanks for watching. Nothing wrong with being a virgin and a nerd. <laughs>